Tourette syndrome. Two words closely combined with South Park and the Tourette's guy from YouTube. But to me, it's so much more than that. It's something I deal with and live with every single day of my life. Now, one thing I want you guys to know is that Tourette's syndrome, along with asthma, cancer, and heart disease, is in fact a medical condition. Now, do you guys notice anything different about me? And every single time I ask this question, I get blank faces and. It's so quiet in the room you could hear a pin drop. That's because while I do have Tourette syndrome, my tics aren't as prevalent. And for you to really understand what I'm talking about, we need to dive a little bit more into what Tourette syndrome actually is. Tourette syndrome is a medical condition that causes tics, which is medically defined as an involuntary, rapid, reoccurring, sudden stereotype, motor or vocal involvement. But all of that really means it's a movement or sound that your body makes that it can't control. Now there are two different types of tics, and I know this may sound corny, but when I do tell people that I have Tourette, it's a medical condition, and it causes me to have tics. People take a step back and say, "Wait, I don't want to get those. Those are disgusting brown bugs. Please <laughs> get away from me." But no, the the tics that we're talking about are spelled T-I-C-S, and there are three most prevalent types. Um, motor tics are just sounds or words that your body makes that it can't control, and vocal tics are words or phrases that your body makes that it can't control. I have none of these tics at the moment. I used to have a few motor tics. I'd blink my eyes, crack my neck, jerk my body in weird ways, and my vocal tics used to be repeating a Z sound over and over in my head until it just sounded perfect. Now, the one type of tic that I do have. Is a tick of the mind, and unfortunately for me, when I'm advocating, it's the only one that you can't see. A tick of the mind is most closely related to OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. The biggest difference between the two is that with OCD, you feel you have to do all these different things, or else something bad's going to happen. With a tick of the mind, you do these things, and you don't know why. Now, my specific tick of the mind is every night before I go to sleep, when I put down the blinds on my windows, I have to. Get up against them really close, line them up with my fingers, and then go to the next one and make sure they're the exact same distance away. Everything has to be perfect for me. Now, the diagnosis of Tourette syndrome. Well, most people will start to experience symptoms at the age of five to seven, and that's exactly what happened for me. I was diagnosed right before I went into kindergarten. Symptoms must appear before the age of 18, though. And in order to be actually classified as having Tourette, not a chronic tic disorder or anything up the hierarchy of tic disorders, you have to have multiple motor and vocal tics for at least a year. Now, the weird part for me is that if I were to go into a neurologist's office, I wouldn't be able to be classified as having Tourette, maybe a tic disorder at the most. But because I don't have any motor or vocal tics, no one would be able to tell me anything about that. And that's what I find really interesting about Tourette is that it's a symptom-based diagnosis. So about 25% of kids will have a tic at some point in their life, but one in 350 students are actually diagnosed with Tourette. It's three times more common in males than in females, and tics can wax and wane. So if you were to see me in the fifth and sixth grade walking down the halls, I would be having a pretty bad day. I'd be kicking up my leg, jerking all over the place, making these weird, ridiculous sounds. But a week later, if there was no stress, I may be totally fine, just like I am right now. Tourette is a neurological disorder, which means that there's a chemical imbalance in the brain. The three chemicals, neurotransmitters, that are most closely associated with Tourette are dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. So when I raise my hand and put it back down, in your guy's head, your stoplight is working perfectly fine. It turns from green to red the second you put your arm down. But for me, the stoplight's broken. It keeps going on green, which sends these chemical impulses that make me and all my fellow Tourettes do these weird, ridiculous things. Tourette syndrome is inherited, and people are born with it. But like I said, the symptoms don't appear until five to seven. Tourette syndrome is also lifelong. So in my case, I don't have any tics anymore. But for the rest of my life, even if I never tick another day in my life, I will always be classified as having Tourette.
Now, there are a bunch of comorbid conditions or comorbid diseases that come along with Tourette syndrome. And luckily and unluckily for me, um, I have none of them. Obsessions and compulsions are one. And a big one is handwriting problems. Dysgraphia is huge among people with Tourette. When I went to Washington, D.C. to be trained to become a youth ambassador, a person who advocates on behalf of Tourette, like I'm doing now, I met at least 30 out of the 100 people there who all had dysgraphia. It's really tough for a lot of these kids to, you know, pay attention in school. So many things going on, so many ticks going on, and on top of that, they can't even write correctly. They have to have really accommodative teachers that are able to print out all the notes and cater to their every single need in order to keep up with the normal person. Possible treatments. Now, when I say treatments, I want you to know that I do not mean a cure at all. There, no, there is no cure for Tourette syndrome. It is lifelong, like I said. But there are some medications that can help people out. I personally was on two in the fifth and sixth grade, the worst period of my life for Tourette. They didn't really help me, though. Tenex and Clonidine, both blood pressure medications. Every time I upped the dosage, I just felt I was having more nightmares and more nightmares, and for whatever reason, they didn't do anything to help my tics. Cbit, more of a therapy than a medication. So my tic of kicking my leg up behind me in the sixth grade would have been transferred through this Cbit, or therapy, into squeezing my fist. It looks to take a socially awkward tic and make it more socially acceptable. Botox I always find kind of funny, because you closely associate with that of people being wrinkle-free. But it does work to help simple tics, which are small motor movements, like eye blinking or cracking your knuckles. Deep brain stimulation is this really cool new innovative surgery that they take a, I want to say, electrical impulser about the size of a cathode, about the size of a pacemaker, that's what it is, and they put it inside your brain, and it sends electrical impulses every single time a irregular electrical impulse is sensed coming out of your brain. Now, it's really, really dangerous, and it's only used in situations where tics are really, really bad. Some people pound their legs constantly or do things that make them not able to function correctly. That's when deep brain stimulation would be okay. Environmental factors. Now, these are what brings on my tics more than anything. On a regular day's basis, I barely ever tic. But before my standardized tests, where I was very anxious and I was very stressed, well, my tics came on a lot more. That's going back to the waxing and waning idea that we were talking about earlier. Fatigue is also a big thing that brings on especially my tics more. I know that I'm tired when I'm going crazy, blinking all over the place and doing these really weird motions. So, what's so bad about Tourette? Well, luckily for me, not that much. I don't have to sit in class every day twitching, shaking, screeching, and falling behind. But for some people, like the 100 people that I met up in Washington, D.C., it can be extremely embarrassing, extremely uncomfortable, and it really does interfere with your everyday life. So, why do I act this way? Well, like I said, I don't. But so many people I know do. My little buddy in the Big Buddy Little Buddy program of the Tourette Association of America goes to Harrison High School. His name's Josh. He was having such a tough time dealing with his tics. People were bullying him, making fun of him constantly, every single day. Because of these weird, outlandish motions and weird things that he was saying, it made him an outcast, a freak, per se. But that's why I come here. That's why I advocate to people like you guys. Because I want to show you that Tourette syndrome, while it does hinder the lives of some, can be okay for others. My life hasn't been impacted too much because of Tourette. I haven't been able to not do the things that I want. But some people, that's a reality. I want to be here to show you guys that people can be accepted for who they are. It doesn't matter whether they look ridiculous on the outside. They're a normal person just like you or me. Thanks.